Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebane. Today's a stash with Stephanie Day where we come out with a brand new fat quarter friendly pattern that's been inspired by this month's collection that we shipped out to our stash with Stephanie members. This month is called Cables because I've been knitting a lot of socks and I aspire someday to be able to knit cables. When we, this fabric came in, my husband saw it and was like, it's so fancy and elegant. I like it. It's, I still find it entertaining that he has opinions on fabric after working with us for so long. Um, but I was like, that, that could be it. I could make some quilted cables instead of knitted cables since they intimidate me still. So that was where the inspiration came from. We're gonna be doing a lot of strip piecing to create both the long cable strip and then the point where it's going to cross or at least look like it's going to cross. And so it actually goes together fairly quickly. I, at the time that I'm filming this, I started my quilt on, I started cutting it Friday night and three days later, I have got most of the quilt put together and I'm ready to finish it up once I finish filming this tutorial. So it is pretty quick, even though we're dealing with some skinny strips because it's a lot of longer pieces and that strip piecing really makes it work well. So it's a great way to have a sophisticated quilt that looks like it took a long time because there are smaller pieces when everything's put together, but because of that strip piecing element, it's not so bad because we're not putting together a bunch of teeny little pieces to make teeny little pieces. We're doing strips and then cutting them down. All right, if you have not heard about Stashing with Stephanie, it's our subscription club here at Quilt Addicts Anonymous where we bring you the best modern quilting lines that are coming out that month as a fat quarter bundle. And so each month you're going to be getting 10 fat quarters in the mail plus a free pattern that has been designed specifically to use with the collection. Now you never have to actually use that pattern with the collection, you can do whatever you want. You can stash them, you can make them beautiful in your quilt or you can use it with one of the dozens of other Stash with Stephanie patterns that we have available that you get for free once you join. You also get access to an exclusive discount on my two Fat Quarter books, Fat Quarter Patchwork Quilts and Fat Quarter Workshop. And both of those are also obviously packed with Fat Quarter patterns so you can get inspired with that. If you do decide you want to make this month's pattern or once you are a member, you have access to what's called the finishing kit where we send you the five fat quarters you did not receive plus whatever you need for background and binding. And that again is always going to be at a discount. So all in all, you're going to save about 20% on the cost of the bundle each month plus another 20% on the finishing kit and any additional fabric you might want to order if you have another project in mind or if you just really love that collection and want to get a bunch of it. Now if you are not a member and you love this pattern and love this fabric we've already shipped it out to our customers. So you're going to want to sign up to become a member and then on your second purchase our website will know that you are a member and you will automatically get your discount and you can get a kit a full kit of this and you'll be able to make the lap size because then next uh, collection that we'll be shipping out will be around the 20th of next month. So that is February already. Wow, the month has really flown by. But around the 20th of February, we'll be shipping out our next collection. And that is going to be a very different collection from Wishwell and Robert Kaufman. So that one's going to be really stunning, but in a totally different um, way. I try to mix it up and give you lots of really good options. So that way, even if it's not your taste, it might be a taste of like a family member or something. But I really do like this month's collection, which is a good segue to take a peek at it. And then we'll get into the tutorial. So this month's pattern really makes use of using different color values. So we're going to use the lighter color values like this one in the center of our cables, our darker color values on the outside, and then I'm saving our medium color values for scrappy binding. So this definitely counts as one of those lighter values. It is a line drawing of trees. It kind of fades but has some texture to it. It's really very pretty. We are going to see this print two more times. This is one of three variations and this one has more of a rusty brown hue to it. It's really pretty how it has the organic lines and the little bit of design going through there and it looks really great as part of our cables. I really love this floral print that is part of it. It's kind of a medium scale print in terms of it's not like the hero print that's going to like wow you but it is really pretty and it looks really good in those inner cables of our strip piecing unit. This one kind of has a grayish background, but we'll see it in a couple others. 
This fabric, when you get close, it has kind of an argyle diamond shape to it when you get close in on all those what look like dots. And then we also have colors that you can see throughout the rest of the collection in the center of each one of the diamonds. It's really clever. This is a smaller scale print of a very charcoal background where again, we're seeing those wildflowers just kind of meandering around doing whatever they want to do. And that bright yellow and white really just make it all pop. All right, here's a second of three of these colorways. This one is a nice medium brown. Here is that wildflower print again, that's on a small scale. And this one has a very dusty rose background and it's really gorgeous. This one, the scale is small enough that I feel like you almost could use it with doll clothes. And Clothworks is actually printed on a shirting. So it's a very lightweight cotton substrate, totally fine for quilts. I've made lots of quilts with Clothworks fabrics, but it would also drape nicely for doll clothes. Here we are back to the line drawing of the tree again. This one is very much in a gray, sort of grayish structure. Looks really good. Here we have our small scale wildflower again. This time it's got that rusty brown background. And again, this, this wouldn't just work for doll clothes. This would also work for human clothes. So make sure you check out our Intro to Garment Sewing series with Stephanie Brennan. She normally answers your customer service emails, but she also has a degree in fashion design. So she hosted that for you guys. And you can get all you need to know and grab some of this to make yourself a skirt. Here's that really small scale diamond dot again. This one is definitely a medium value print, so I saved this for my scrappy binding. This is the last of those line drawings. This one has that pink hue to the lines and a very white, not pure white, but a white background, kind of a winter white. Here's that argyle print again, the little diamond dot, and it is really pretty. This one has more of a pinky brown texture to the background. And we have our final of the dot and diamond print, and this one is in charcoal background. And we're gonna wrap it up with my two favorite prints. This one is that medium scale wildflower floral that I am so fond of. This one has a really great textured background that is kind of grazy tan, it's really pretty. And I think this is my favorite one of the collection. It's that same print, but this time with a nice charcoal slate gray textured background. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I loved it every time it popped up in one of my cables. All right, so that is Delilah by Esther Fallon for Clothworks. Again, if you love this collection and you are not already a member with Stash and with Stephanie, you didn't join last month in December, you're gonna want to join first and then on your second checkout, get your yardage, get your quilt kit, get your bundle, whatever it is you wanna get of this because you'll get that 20% off discount and you'll be able to get the pattern for free plus like $400 worth of other free downloads of previous Stash and with Stephanie patterns and discounts on my two fat quarter books. Now, just a reminder that if you want to make sure you're getting next month's collection, then you need to sign up by the end of January. We have 31 days in the month, so you have until the 31st. And then you should get your shipment notification around the 20th of February when we're ready to ship all the bundles out. And if you um, sign up on February 1st or later, then you're going to be waiting, unfortunately, until late March to get that shipment notification. We do that so we can make sure we can ship everybody their bundle at the same time because there is a mad dash to get additional fabric. We're gonna have a little bit less fabric coming in so it's not gonna be a guarantee that you're gonna be able to get a kit if you're not a member. So definitely check that out over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. All right, so you're gonna wanna have your pattern cables ready when you are following along with this pattern because we're doing a couple of things in the construction method that are meant to save fabric so that you don't have to use as much or have that much waste. Um, but the numbers are different for how many you need based on what size you're making. So make sure you go get your cables pattern over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com before you follow along with these next steps. All right, so for the first strip piecing unit that we're going to make, first we need to cut down a little bit of our long strips because we need a two and a half inch chunk to go in another part of the quilt block. And we don't need the entire length of it in order to get the strip piecing units that we need to make our cable block. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna, I have, a black and a brown or a gray and brown because I wanted to make sure that I had one of each in every single cable so that way I could make it look balanced when I lay everything out later and we'll try to make sure that we put some footage in of that so you can kind of see it's super easy. 
but it starts at the very beginning by making sure that you have even amounts that you're using of your brown and your tan. And thankfully, we have even amounts in this fabric collection, so it works out perfectly. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I am starting not at the selvage end. I wanna make sure when I'm strip piecing that I keep all my selvage ends lined up because some fabric collections, not this one, but some of them can have a really fat selvage. And if you are foot flopping, like having it one selvage at one end and one at the other, you can lose as much of two inches of your usable fabric because you have you know white selvage at both ends and nobody wants that. So just make sure whenever you're strip piecing that you always line up those selvage ends. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut two and a half inch um, strip off the end of this. I'm gonna overcut a little bit to get started just so that I can make sure I have a squared up edge. All right, so you can see I've got it a little bit beyond that two and a half inch, uh, just so that I can make sure I have a nice square edge later, because I just cut these straight off the fat quarter and I didn't square it up ahead of time. I'm gonna make sure I'm doing that as I'm cutting the pieces. So we're gonna do that for both of these first. Now we're gonna take our two and a half inch pieces and we're gonna set them to the side. We don't need them just yet, but we will later on. All right, so now I'm gonna lay this out Again, getting both my selvages on my left side here, and I'm going to get my three lighter value fabrics to go on the inside. You can see that it is longer because we haven't cut off the two and a half inch strip there, because we don't need to. And I'm just gonna get these laid out here. I just strip piece, like I, I just laid everything on top of each other and, and went to town on this. I did not, plan out each individual one besides as I was sewing them together to make sure I wasn't putting any two right next to each other. But that was really about it. Like these are the same print, so I could switch this up, but I kind of like how we have tan and tan. Uh, but honestly, this one looks a little darker. So we're gonna move it to the center. You don't have to be this picky for it to turn out good. Um, but you, you certainly can be if you want. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sewing these together, right sides together into sets of two. Then we're gonna add a third on and then we're going to join all of our strips. And if you've never stripped piece before, it is amazing because it makes everything go so much faster. So instead of cutting all these to like one and a half by eight and a half and then sewing them together as 10 separate pieces, we're gonna sew them together as five pieces and then cut them apart to get two blocks. So it just goes so much faster, it makes things a lot easier, but you do have to have an accurate quarter inch seam and good pressing habits in order for it to work out well. All right, I'm gonna teach you all that as we go. All right, so I've got my machine set up to sew a quarter inch stitch, which is what we use in all quilting. And as you can see, I have all my selvages lined up on that left edge, so that way I'm going to have all of the stuff that I'm gonna lose where there isn't a print, because it doesn't go all the way to the edge of the fabric on one side, I'll be able to cut that all off in the same go, rather than have it be split and lose up to two inches, depending on the selvage you're working with. All right, so I'm just gonna start by grabbing two, and I never pin when I'm strip piecing. I just make sure that everything is lined up nice when I get it started, and then I lift my strips up, and I get them lined up on the side, and I just put my finger on top, and I let the feed dogs pull the fabric and my finger up. I'm not stretching this out, I'm just letting the feed dogs do their job and pull it forward. And then when I'm done, I just repeat that process till I hit the end of the strip. Now, because we trimmed some off of our dark fat quarter strips, you are not gonna have the same length strip and that is okay. Just make sure that they are lined up and even on the edges and stitch all the way down. All right, now I'm gonna grab my next two, which are my two middle light fat quarters, and I'm gonna chain piece these. Now, when I was doing this at home, I stacked up all the ones that I needed, and we tell you how many those are in the pattern, and I just sewed all of them at one time and just chain fed them through and then pressed all at once, and it saves so much time. So I suggest maybe do like one block ahead of time if this is new to you, and then do it all in one go, so that way you can just rock and roll and get this quilt done. 
So now we're gonna press our strips open and I love pressing my strips open like 99.9% .9 of the time, but especially for strip piecing because I find it's a lot easier to get a straight seam rather than one that tends to kind of curve up on you, which makes it hard to get good strip piece units that are accurate and square. So to do that, I open up the seam with my fingers and then I keep three or four fingers down on that seam, kind of finger pressing it open as I keep the tip of that iron right down the center. And I forgot the good iron at home. So I'm using the travel version, which uh, is not, not my favorite, but it, it does the job. It will get it pressed open. All right, so that's done from that side. But when you press open, it's also really helpful to press again from the other side. And that just helps get everything nice and secure and flat. And everything works out really, really well. And you can see how nice and straight the seam is. There's no curving up to the side. And it's gonna be really easy to quilt through because it's a really flat seam and really flat joints when we sew everything together. All right, I'm gonna press the other strip open and then we're gonna keep sewing the strip together uh, until we have a complete strip set. Now my final step whenever I finish a strip piece unit like this one is to spritz it down with my spray mister. I don't like putting water in my iron because I feel like every iron I've ever done that to eventually spits. So this just has a light mist that you, is created when you spritz it. And they were originally developed for um, hairstylists actually. And then you get the effect of steam without having to put water in your iron. And I feel like you also distort your fabric less. So this just gives it a really nice flat uh, join, which is gonna make it a lot easier to cut apart, which we're gonna do next. This is another instance where we're going to want to make sure that you are paying attention to your pattern because we need two different size units, whether you are making a half block or a whole block and the amount changes of how many of those you need based on how large your quilt is. So make sure you're referring to your directions so you know how many of which size to cut, but the process is going to be the same no matter what size it is you are cutting. So the blocks for this are kind of long and skinny and you could use a six by 24 inch ruler to cut this, but I found it easier to use my 12 and a half inch or my nine and a half inch square ruler. These are not things that you have to go out and buy, but this 12 and a half inch ruler was one of the first three rulers I ever purchased and I use them a lot and don't ever regret it. Um, nine and a half, I just purchased recently after like 15 years of quilting and it was great for the project I used it for and I do have uses for it at other times but it's not one that is like my day-to-day -day situation. But anyway so this first one I'm going to cut at eight and a half. So when you're strip piecing there's a couple of things you want to pay attention to when you're cutting off your first piece. So here is my eight and a half inch mark. I want to make sure that is beyond where all the selvages end and your selvages may end at different points. So just pay attention, make sure that that is not in any of the white sections and then pick any of the seam lines. I'm going to pick this one and make sure that you have your inch line lined up on that. That's going to make sure that the rest of this is nice and square. Now, technically this should be lining up right on this inch line. I am less than an eighth of an inch off, so I'm not going to worry about that. It's going to work out fine. Now that I've made sure I have all of that ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and cut across here. Now for this first one only, I've got to flip it around and I need to trim off those selvages. So this is the one that I'm trimming to eight and a half. Remember there's another size. If you're doing a half block, this is for the full block only, so refer to your pattern. But now that I've got my seam here lined up with an inch line and or one of the dotted lines and eight and a half exactly on here, I know I'm nice and square, go ahead and trim that. So that one's good. Now we're gonna do the same thing here, except we're gonna be able to line up from the start with our eight and a half here. And again, I'm gonna line up an inch line along here. Now, sometimes this gets off and it is off a little bit here. If that's the case, just do the overcut again, get everything lined up and you have enough wiggle room to be able to make this work. All right, so we have two block centers ready to go. We have not too much waste, but it's a lot faster 
and then cutting all of these tiny rectangles and then sewing them all together and pressing them all open goes so much better this way. We've got another strip piece unit to do for our next section that is gonna form the cable cross. And I'm gonna do that kind of on a fast forward as well with some music because the process is the same. It is just the placement that is a little bit different and then the cutting, it's gonna be a little bit smaller unit as well. I feel like I should point out here that for this particular strip set, it instructs you to use the full length of the 21 inch wide dark strips. We're not gonna cut that two and a half inch strip off. We don't need it um, for the cable connection point. And so you want the full strip width here because we need it in order to get the correct amount to be able to have all the units we need for the quilt. All right, so this one I'm gonna cut across as well. It is a shorter unit and that measurement is in your pattern. This is the only part of the block construction that's not strip piece until we start assembling the rows next. This is where the cable is going to cross. So this is the two and a half inch rectangle that we cut to start with. And then we have some background squares that we're going to sew to either side. It's really simple. We're just going to flip them right sides together and stitch down both sides and press those seams open. All right, it is time to assemble our blocks. We have both a full block and a half block. The rows are alternating a little bit. We're gonna start each even row with a half block and that's gonna create kind of an offset look, add a little bit more visual interest and help that cable pattern kind of weave in and out of each other. And what I tried to do with mine, remember I tried to keep a black and a brown on either side. So I tried to do the same thing when I was doing my smaller strip piece units for when they start to cross. So what I do when I lay these out is I try to make sure that my black is next to my brown on all sides. That way it's always gonna be some visual interest and have a very balanced looking quilt. And I also made sure that I had equal amounts of black and brown for my tops. And so that way those will be equally spread out as well. So from here, we're just going to be joining rows. For our half block, we just have to join our top uh, section here to a row here. For this one, we have to put all of these together in order to make that work. I'm gonna zoom in because the process of pinning is going to be the same no matter what we're doing. I'm actually gonna start by sewing both of these sets onto both sides. If you have enough pins, you can do this all in one go and just zip down both sides and then add your cross point last. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the tips on pinning to make sure that you have perfect joints every time. All right, so we have three seams that are going to be joining here. And it's very high contrast because of how this all worked out. Actually, I'm gonna flip these because I've got a different center. And that way it'll add a little bit extra visual interest. I tried whenever possible to make sure these were different fabrics. And this is the same print, but a different background. All right, so I'm gonna flip that right sides together. And when you press the seams open, you can really see clearly where everything is at. So you just have to make sure that your seams are directly on top of each other. And this is a little easier to do when it's you know dark on one side and light on the other. And then I pin right where we're going to be sewing. So I pin right where that quarter inch seam is gonna be because that's where it matters that it gets held together. If I pin way out here, that's, that's a lot of room that can shift around here. And so I don't wanna mess with that. So I'm always, no matter what I'm doing, making sure I'm pinning right where it's gonna matter. Now there might be a little bit of difference in how wide your strips are. I've got a little bit to ease in with that charcoal one. Um, but that's okay. Um, it's gonna be a minimal amount. You're just gonna give the fabric a little bit of tension as you bring it through, and it will look nice and flat when everything is said and done. And these are such small strips, it's really easy to be off just a smidge, and it looks like it's much greater of a deal than it actually is, like if these were two inch strips or th even three. But you can see there's a little bit of gapping like right there. But if I take this and I just kind of stretch it as I go, it's gonna ease out and it'll be just fine. I'll be able to ease that in. 
Now, since I have enough pins, I'm gonna go ahead and pin the bottom one on too right now. I'm also gonna get that half block prepped up. All right, so here's that part where I had a little bit of easing in to do. What I'm gonna do is I'm just kind of grabbing right on that seam and I'm just kind of making sure that it's nice and flat. And that has eased in just fine, no problems. So this part is a little slow going because we're really only sewing one inch at a time and I'm waiting to stop until that needle is all the way down in that seam allowance because then that kind of acts like a pin and I can remove my other pin. But you absolutely can chain piece these. I just sat on the couch with my daughter and watched a movie, pinned all these up and then took it over to the sewing machine, pressed them open and was good to go. Now at this point, when you press it, it's gotta be a lot of lifting and pressing because we don't wanna accidentally press any of these seams going in the wrong direction. So make sure that you are lifting that iron up and setting it all the way down. That's a little exaggerated, but you get the point. And I'm gonna do the other side too here. So our half block is done. We're not gonna add this piece on, the crossing piece. That's gonna get added in the row assembly phase. So there's a lot of vertical rows that we're gonna put together. We'll put in some video, some vertical video of me doing that so you can kind of see that process. But basically you're gonna lay everything out in an area that's pleasing to you. I always do it on my bed. I have to finish it that day. And then you are going to add a couple of these at the bottom of each one of your full blocks whatever the last one is in that vertical row. But for our blocks, we are going to put one on the top only because it will get completed when it is attached to the block that goes below it. So for this one, I'm gonna put it on the top here. And this one, we only have two pieces to pin. So that's quite nice. It's the same process as before where you wanna line up those seams right on top of each other. And then we're gonna put the pin in the right side of that seam allowance. That's because we reach the left side first when we are sewing that together. And I don't pin my corners, you certainly could. Now keep in mind that depending on how accurate your quarter seam was, um, it might be slightly longer. Same with your cutting. But again, just line those up as you go and ease in any extra, just like we did when we were attaching this part together. All right, so like I said, I don't pin, but I did just line up my two points up there to make sure I'm starting off with everything nice and square. And make sure that your seams underneath are going through nice and flat, that they're not getting pushed over. And again, we're gonna sew until our needle's down in the first half of the seam allowance, that is the left side. And then you can remove your pin, sew across that inch and stop with that needle down. And now this one, I, my square here is just a little bit longer. So I'm just lining those points on top of each other and holding it together with my finger and giving it a little bit of tension so that it flattens out. And then everything will come together pretty close. Now we're gonna go ahead and press this seam from the wrong side. Then we're gonna spritz and press the entire block from the right side. This is usually my last step with any block. It spritz the whole thing down with my spray mister. It's just water in here. But again, it turns into a nice aerosol mist. And what I do is I just follow the lines of those strip piecing to go all the way down. With my regular size iron, this is two passes, but it'll be three with the travel. And it just makes it super flat. Those joins lay really nice. If I flip it over, you can see just how flat everything is looking and how nice it looks. It's just really a, a pleasing, pleasing look. So that's the look. We're gonna have some half blocks and some full blocks. Again, this full block is only gonna have our cable cross on the top only because it will be completed when the next block is um, assembled below when we're putting our vertical rows together. But at this point, you know everything you need to in order to get this quilt top together. And you can actually kind of see how this works where let's pretend that this is a half block row. It's gonna start like that. 
and then it will connect and we will only have one connection point. This is our crossing point. And then it comes out and continues on. And it's really kind of fun because it will be offset like that. And there's going to be a strip in between. So it'll have a nice undulating look to it, be nice and alternating and look really good. Very excited about this quilt since I'm still too chicken to knit cables. We're gonna have a quilt of cables instead. Well, thank you very much for following along with today's pattern cables. I really like this one. I think it's a great use of fat quarters, especially since there are so many collections where you have a good amount of light prints. There were equal amounts of dark prints and light prints in this collection, and then just three medium prints. And that sometimes is really hard because you can see these prints here would not show up if I place them directly next to that background. But by doing it this way, we're able to separate that, still let these kind of have their moment in the sun as they're part of the design, they're part of the quilt, but you get to see them in all their glory as part of it. So when you get that fat quarter bundle and you love the collection, you love the way it looks like, you know, behind me, but then you get it and you're like, but how do I use this in a pattern? It's so many light prints. Well, this is a good win to do it with. Um, and it really turned out quite nice. I'm so excited and I have an idea on quilting it that's gonna make it look like a knit stitch. I have thoughts. We'll see if it, it comes out or not. By the time this comes out, I will have decided and it will be quilted. So you will see if there are little V's in here, then you'll know. Stephanie went for it. She did all the work and she made it happen. But thank you for following along with today's tutorial. If you have not checked out Stash with Stephanie, please do so. It's a way to save 20% and you get free patterns every single month. Plus we are up to like a $400 free pattern discount once you join. We were able to access all of our previous Stash with Stephanie patterns, plus get 20% off um, my two Fat Quarter books, Fat Quarter Workshop and Fat Quarter Patchwork Quilts. So really fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. And until next time, happy quilting. <music>